<laughs> okay, hello. Hello. Okay, so, you know, tonight we've got a, what I think is a super cool video. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> God, we're already punchy. Okay, so, um, yeah, I think this is a super cool video. I mean, just like really full of awesome and shows something really, really cool in PowerShell. And actually quite a bit cool in me, as a matter of fact. Yes, yes, of course. Yes. And, and you know, Jen wanted to go to bed. She's ready to go to bed, but I made her sit up. And, and make this video with Well, me. and I only just now remember what it is that you're talking about. So, yes, this is actually cool, and I'll stay up for it. Yeah, see? Yeah, see? Yeah, see, it pays to listen Tell to the people. Now. Okay, anyway, so the video tonight that we're doing, I'm going to show you how to do something really wicked cool in PowerShell. What we're going to do is we're going to generate uh, an ASPX page in .NET uh, from PowerShell, and I'm going to show you how incredibly easy it is to, to do something like this because I mean you and I have talked a lot before and you know how much I love code that writes code oh yeah big time and that is like I mean even in T-SQL right I mean just like code that writes code is like oh awesome it is full, fully awesome okay so <clears throat> what I did was I started okay let, let me outline the scenario to you very briefly because most of y'all aren't going to care about this but you, you need to know a little bit of the scenario so uh, what I'm doing here is this is the the midnight DBA site redesign okay we're looking to completely redo this site and the problem is I have to redo all of the video pages that already exist uh, completely redesigned and that's really kind of a pain right I mean you've got like over a hundred pages over a hundred something pages that you've got to go through and, and completely redesign and that's really really tough so I decided to try to do this in PowerShell instead and just make the pages dynamic so I'm using a uh, a master page here, and inside the master page, I've got a content placeholder, of course, and with my with my video being played inside of there, right? So I'm going to show you what this particular one looks like. I'm going to show you what this particular one looks like. There you go. So if I view this in the browser, I'm just going to show you what we're going for, right? And it'll come up. Eventually, I said it'll come up. Should we hum? Yes, I think oh, there so. There we go. So there you go, and so so that's uh, that's what the the new video pages more or less are going to look like. And what I need to do is recreate this exact page for every single video that we already currently have on the site, right? Yes, which would normally be a me job. Yes, which would normally be a you <laughs> job. <laughs> um, so okay, here's what I did. I took the code. I got the page looking exactly the way I wanted it. Okay good place to start and if you and if you know anything at all about dot net and even if you don't the it doesn't change what has to happen uh, you got the code behind here that is named you know after the page you know this is uh, t shooting dot aspx and that's t shooting aspx dot vb and of course you've got the inherits the inherits here and that actually comes from that uh, Do, 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 do. Hold on, sorry guys, uh, we need to pause for just a second, I can't do it like this. Okay, we're back. So this inherits right here, comes from the .vb, see, and it's the public class for the vb. So this name has to match this name. Fair enough? I can handle it. Okay, good. So, and, and now like I said, now I've got the rest of the page there, well, and I've got this all co code folded, but you can see all my... And we have a video on code folding. Code folding. Yes, Ooh, see, you can, it is, isn't it? Code folding. So, okay, so I got all this. Great. So now that I've got the code the way I want it, can't seem to keep that over there. Um, all I have to do now is add it to my uh, to my PowerShell script. And what I used for this, and you see here, I've got my I've got my dynamic. Uh, my dynamic properties right here and these are just two of the dynamic properties I'm gonna use um, so what I did is I used an a, 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 I keep wanting to say ASP uh, a PowerShell property called uh, here strings I've never heard of here strings <laughs> what are they? that's better okay so and here strings are probably one of the coolest things you're ever gonna find in PowerShell or any other language because it is a it's a regular string. You fill it with a regular string, only it preserves your formatting. 
like pre and HTML? Uh, wow, that's been a long time. Sorry. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, why don't you do a video on that and then I'm I'll tell you. I'm kicking it old school. Sorry. So, so I set a variable. Here I'm pointing at the screen again. So I set a variable, right, equal to uh, at and uh. double double quotes, and then at the end I have double quotes and at right to to kind of encase that. And anything in the middle gets preserved, goes in just the way it is uh, with preserved formatting. Yes, that is, that's exactly like a pre-screen. Yes. So that's, and that's very important in something like ASPX, right? I mean, sure. Dot .NET, I mean, you, when you have a line break, you need the, you need the line to break. Uh, but that's not all. It also allows you to, to uh, parse variables as well. So you see here, I have my video name variable. Mm -hmm. So it, it's actually smart enough to read variables as well. And you can actually run code blocks in there. So I've actually run code blocks and cursored through database options in there and built tables in there. It's pretty cool. Very right? cool. So uh, all I did was was paste that stuff in there. And then that was for my main VB. And you notice how here I just replaced all of the code behind stuff. Here's the dynamic name I need. Here's the, the public class I need from the .VB, right? Um, here's the video name again from the source uh, because I've got a JavaScript that needs to be built as well. Um, and you notice how after each one of these, if it's if it's got something else after it, see like video name dot ASPX, uh, mm -hmm. I can't do this, okay? Because it, it it'll take it'll read that entire thing. So I have to put the back tick escape character in there to let it know that. This is the variable, and this is the the static text, right? Okay. So that escape character breaks it, because otherwise, if you if you did this, then it would think that vidname dot aspx etc is the key, is variable the name. the variable name, right? How odd. And it would and it would come up blank right there. It'd say code behind nothing. Okay, so to to say that again, if you've got this, um, I'm sorry, what did you call this again? Here, I'm going to point at the here screen. Here string. Okay, so if you have a here string and you have a variable in it then every time you use a variable, you have to escape the next character after it. If there's not a space. If there's not a space. Okay, this okay. would go just fine. And mm. that's not in here strings. That's in, in strings in PowerShell in general. Oh, okay. Okay? So you, you, you have to have something to separate that variable. If it's a space, PowerShell's smart enough to know that. If it's not, the back tick over there, which is the, the, bottom, the bottom character on the tilde, just the left to the one, is the escape character. That's actually pretty cool. I can't think of another language that that will allow you to put a variable like that and then escape it behind. Yeah. Well, and one of the cool things that I really like about this is uh, uh, you notice how in... I, I don't know any other language that wouldn't require you to string build yeah. because you've got variables yeah. that, that's smart enough to go in there and parse out the variables. That's wicked cool. That I wish T cool. SQL were smart enough to do that, right? Well, you know. So... Uh, so you've got your, your dynamic portions here, and here's another one, right? Source video domain .js, I think I said that already. And you go all the way down, you've got your page, everything. So you close that, and then you just say dollar page to out file, and you give it a name .aspx. Nice. Right? And then you got to do the code behind, and it's the exact same thing. Notice how here's my public class, the same as my video name, because I set it up here to inherit from that right so they have to those two have to match and everything else I don't really have any any VB in there so there's nothing else to put right it's just a, the unload and nothing else but if I had VB in there I would put it in there and it would be it would be fabulous right and I could even have dynamic VB generated so if I had like a a web grid or something that I wanted to put on there or something like that that had you know, that had some kind of, of individual customization there. I could hard code that here. Um, and then here I've got my JS that, that actually is my video control player. Uh, and again, I've got my, my vid name with my, with my back tick in there. And so on, right? And then output to video name.js. Pretty simple, right? Very nice. So when I do this here, I'm going to show you this is my PS test. This is the the uh, PowerShell that we're looking at currently, and I'm editing this in uh, Primal Script.
which is Sapien's tool. Excellent PowerShell script tool, by the way. Nice. Uh, so it's going to output to this exact same one because I'm still in the testing phase with this, right? Uh, so I'll save that because I want because I want to save it. <laughs> so I'll come up here. And it created all three of those. There we go. Whew, I was about to go in and create it, all three of those. <laughs> no, really. So I've got all these. Now watch. If I just come up here, and I haven't put them in pr as parameters yet, but if I come up here and say, like, my vid page, and then my new vid page, save that. And I'll create it again. Now look at that. So I've got my three ASPXs, right? And what's really cool about this is now when I come back into Visual Studio, and I can say add existing items. Should we come here and say PS tests? Say my vid page, all three of these guys, add them, and there it is, my vid page, and it should, there we go, view in browser, and it should just come right up. We wait. It's all right. It's a des. It's it's a desktop. It. And there we go, my new vid page. Very nice. Compiled exactly the way I want it. And it's so, all purtified. Right. So all I have to do now, if I want to, or not if, but <laughs> when I'm ready to do all of these, is is you're putting all the videos in the database. So all I got to do is cycle through all the videos that already exist and just build one of these for each one of them, which is really really easy. And in, uh, in PowerShell, all it would be is something at the beginning here. Uh, would be like a get content. Uh, yeah, I'd have like a get content right here, actually. And so I could get content and pipe that to a for each. And for each one of those, I just run through this and just set that equal to the current one. And job done. And it's that easy. And you create hundreds of pages like that in just a few seconds. Very cool. So I love automation. I know. Huh? I really do. So anyway, uh, that's that's how you can that's how you can write code in PowerShell that writes .NET code to be compiled, and actually pretty cool. And I'm relatively certain that we could uh, also add MS Build down there to do the rest of it, and and even even all the way up to the uh, to the publish point. Oh yeah. I'm relatively sure I can. I ha I haven't uh, I haven't played with it yet, but that's my plan. I support that. Absolutely. So I'd like to add it to the project, and I'm wonder I'm wondering if I can add it to the TFS project as well, because it would be nice to create all these, add them to the project, uh, deploy them, and then check them into TFS. Yeah, I know, dude. Right. So anyway, uh, that's all I've got tonight. Um, it was a wicked cool video, and you can write C sharp classes, uh, VB classes. You can write any kind of classes you want, because these here strings will do exactly what you tell them to. And they can be perfectly dynamic. So think about, you know, writing custom classes for things automatically and pushing them out. Dude, pretty cool. Very cool. All right, guys. That's all I got. All right, that's all I got. Later. I think I can do this. I think I have to come down here. So.